All right. Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hope you're having a great midweek. Um, coming to you from LA. I just got back late last night. It feels good to be home. Um, but yeah, I, I'm starting to really gear up for tour. I had a show in Puerto Rico this weekend um, and got to get a little bit of sun. We, Me and a couple of the crew members and some of my dancers, we stayed for like two days to just enjoy. I am trying to be a little bit better lately about living my life, doing my thing, working hard, but also not forgetting to enjoy like the life that I've worked really hard for. Um, so that was really nice to just spend some time, you know, enjoying the people I get to work with and getting to celebrate, um, you know, that we did a, we did a show. Um, okay. So today, I don't know if you know this, but it's called last encore because this is my last amp show. I've had a lot of fun doing this show and I just love the community we have here. I love, um, Oh, funny. Someone's just leaving LAX. Um, enjoy good for have a good flight, Haley. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I've really enjoyed having the show. I've gotten to speak to such amazing people. And so I thought it would be fun today, since it's my last one, to just kind of revisit some of the things I loved about it and play some of the music from different guests that I've had. So um, first of all, one thing that I thought was really fun that I, I learned through doing this these interviews and speaking to all these people, I feel like it was so cool that no matter who I was talking to, there was common ground to be found. There was something, you know, huge that we shared in common or a place where our paths um, had similar experiences in the past, or maybe our paths even crossed and we didn't even know it from the past or our beliefs were really similar. And it was just really cool to realize that like, you know, people from all over the world, we have so much more common than we have that's different. And I think a lot of times we're kind of forced to, whether it's for survival's sake or for just trying to understand ourselves or for politics or whatever it may be, I think a lot of times society makes us really focus on the things that we are different in. And, you know, and it's beautiful to celebrate the things that make us different. Um, but at the end of the day, um, we're all so much more similar than we are different. And, um, you know, it was even just going back through some of my guests. I love when I was talking to Sophie Tucker and like um, Sophie was like talking all about breath work. And I got so excited and we were both reading the same book called Breathe. And we both were firm believers in breath work. And, and it was just cool to be like, oh, my gosh, we have such a common ground, you know, even though our art is so different and, you know, everything about the way, you know, we probably approach a lot of life is very different. But we both had this really strong connection to breathing and um just the importance of like i love that she also said oh in terms of mental health you name it i've done it you know she's like i've done therapy i've read the self-help books i've done i've listened to podcasts i've i've done meditation i've done breath work i've done cold showers you know and also that's something i really sh feel like i share with her it's like if you want to talk about mental health i've, I've probably tried a, a lot of the different things and i've really put a lot of work into that part of my life so it was cool to hear that from her as well that you know she's she's drinking the same kool-aid that i am um also it was fun to hear from tucker that he was like oh my gosh in college your song was my ringtone i'm guessing it was crystallized but you know, just to feel this connection to the different people that I, um, I interviewed to be like, oh my gosh, like I listen to them. They listen to me. We're like mutual fans of each other. Um, but also just the sharing of common ground was a really cool thing that I found with every single guest. So since I've been speaking of Sophie Tucker, I want to play their song summer in New York. They are killing it right now. They are doing such big shows. They are going out and they just killed Coachella. They're doing huge festivals all over the world. So if you get a chance to check them out, you definitely should. They also have all kinds of cool collaborations with brands like uh, G-Star. They did a cool colored denim collection with them. And I don't know, they, they seem to always do something really cool on the horizon all the time. So anyways, this is Summer New York from Seth Sophie Tucker. Oh my gosh, words are hard, guys. So good. They have such a good vibe in their stuff. And I love her voice. Her voice is just so effortless. And their shows, honestly, I've never been to one, um, sadly, but their shows look insane. They look like they have so much fun on stage. They've got dancers. The colors are all so bright that they wear. Um, they've just got a very specific vibe, look, feel, and I, I love that about them. So anyways, super fun. 
Hope you enjoyed that by Sophie Tucker. Um, another fun thing I remember, probably one of my favorite moments from the AMP show is actually when I was interviewing AJ McLean from the Backstreet Boys. And, you know, huge Backstreet Boy girl. Like, that was me growing up. I was definitely a fan of the Backstreet Boys. I liked NSYNC too, I'm not going to lie, but um, I did just love me, the boys. And um, when he said that his family were huge fans like he, he emphasized huge fans of my christmas album i mean my my little heart nearly dropped that was so cool and so exciting um to just again be like oh my gosh someone that i love so much and someone who shaped a lot of my my relationship with music from the time i was really young you know that the fact that he said his family enjoys what i do was very very cool and um a moment i will not forget um also from that i got to go to their show that was like a week later at the hollywood bowl and oh my gosh it was one of the most fun i have ever had at a concert so if you were ever a backstreet boys fan you know or if you grew up in that time period when they were huge you know you couldn't get away from at least liking some of their songs um it's an experience it is so nostalgic it is so fun it is we me and uh, fish went and we had the best time so um with that, I want to go play uh, Don't Go Breaking My Heart. It's from their DNA album, their newer album. And this is from the Backstreet Boys. Oh, I can't even tell you. That show was so good. I I'd probably say that I'm emphasizing it too much. I, but I'm a big fan, so what can I say? Um, oh, my gosh. Someone's just saying they're waiting for me in Madrid. I am so excited. I literally, um, all this morning, was running around doing costuming stuff. I spend way too much time on my costumes and my costumes for my dancers, but I love it and it's enjoyable for me, so I do it anyway. But anyways, I, I can't wait to come out there. I can't wait to come to, um, you know, all the different cities. We're, we're getting to go to some really cool places, some that I've never been, some that are repeat, so I can't wait. Um, but yes, and I, it, it's funny, whenever I go to a show and I have a great experience and I'm like, oh my gosh, that was so amazing. It made me feel empowered. It made me feel stronger. Like. Whenever I have that feeling when I'm at a show, I just think to myself, I hope, I just hope this is a bit of the feeling that I get to give people when I go out there and perform. Because that's always my greatest hope is that I just want people to feel loved. I want them to feel seen. I want them to feel empowered. And so that's my, that's my hope every time I get on stage. And I, I literally pray for that before I go on the stage. And I visualize it. I visualize giving you guys my love. So, um... Let's see. I would like to now play. Um, you know, it was so fun when I got to interview All Time Low. They are just my buddies. And I guess it wasn't the whole band. It was Alex from All Time Low. But, you know, we have a dear connection to, you know, who, someone who is my best friend. And I think he was um, a lot of people's best friends because that's just the kind of guy he was. And he, he was great buddies with all the dudes in All Time Low. And I met them through him. And, um, and he, you know, he passed away several years ago. So it's something that Alex and I will always share a connection to each other through our wonderful friend. And so it was so cool to interview Alex. And um, I love their new song, Sleepwalking. I just think the vibe of it is fun, the pace of it. It's, anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and play it without describing it. This is Sleepwalking by All Time Low. Now, I will say, I have also been to an All Time Low concert, and they are fun as well they are a great time so much energy i had the blast to get to actually join them on stage i played the guitar riff on my violin from kids in the dark it was so fun love them and you know i mean gosh i loved emo music when i was in high school um and even in college and now even so like when i listen to their stuff it still gets me like right back to that feeling of like oh my gosh i still love this music i don't listen to it as much anymore um but yeah, it always, it always fills a place in my heart when I listen to this kind of music. And um, I think personally, I'm biased because they're my friends, but I think they're one of the best emo bands out there. And I say that confidently. So anyways, take that for what it's worth. Um, okay, I loved getting, wow, I've seen a lot of these people live. Um, recently, I went to Betty Who's concert. Oh my gosh, she's my kind of performer. Like she does a show that is so engaging and you can tell she's thought out every detail um and it's very choreographed she has certain spots where she speaks to the audience and like lets you in and you know talks about her experience with the song and you know it just gets really heartfelt then there's times when she's funny then there's times when she's sassy like i just think 
I love that kind of a performer who puts thought into all the different moving little pieces from the costumes to the, the, the talking to the song choice. Like, you know, some artists are a little bit more intentional than others about that. And it's just kind of a sense of preference. And I like that kind of a show. And so when I went to her show, I was like, oh my gosh, she is a girl after my own heart. I knew it when I talked to her and when I interviewed her, just because we shared so much in common about the way we just see the world and the way we create music. But seeing her live was like, yes, yes, I love this. Um, so Betty Who is another great performance. And I also just love the messaging she puts into her music. Um, we talked a lot when she was on the show about just... Um, you know, the, the positivity she wants to put into the world through her music and the, the fact that she wants to encourage people to be brave and step out there and, and dance big and, you know, and don't let anyone blow out your candle or just all the different themes that are in her music. And I, I love this next song. It's called Big. And, you know, I, I think I talked about this last week on the mental health um, podcast or, you know, in a radio show, sorry, not podcast that I did, but she talks about that. I was born to be big. Like for so long, she felt like she, you know, she wished she was small, like, you know, dainty girls, you know, and she felt like that's how she should have been. And I think a lot of times the things that make us great, we get a little bit scared of them and we get a little bit nervous to stand out and, and shine because maybe that's not what everybody else is doing in that particular way or in this particular field or, you know, and she talks about in this song, like, I was born to be big. Like she's six foot plus. I think she's six two. That's a tall woman. And she owns it now. And she stands on that stage and her bigness and her greatness and her boldness. And she just is so beautiful for doing it in the way she does. And so I love that this song just encourages us all to stand up and be big. So good. I love all her stuff. It always puts me in such a good mood. Um, Okay, another fun moment was when I was speaking to Love, and he was saying that I think that I, in college or like years ago, he said that he learned my songs on guitar. I think that's what he said. I'm trying to remember exactly, but that was like a cool connecting moment to just be like, or no, it wasn't he learned them on guitar. I think he remixed them because he was learning to produce music. And so he, he said that he did a, a remix of one of my songs, which was cool. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I feel like a lot of times we all kind of downplay who we are and think like, oh, I'm not that great. Like, oh, you know, I'm not that good at this thing. Like, it's almost hard to sometimes be big, like Betty Who says. And like, oh, and like, heck yes, I've worked really hard to be here. And like, I've earned my place. And, you know, I, I find myself a lot of times almost downplaying the things I've worked so hard to become. And I think that that's common. I think that a lot of us do that. Um but man, it's so important to like own that we've done great things and we deserve to be big. And, you know, in that moment when Lau told me that he's like, oh my gosh, yeah, I remixed one of your songs. And like, I, I, you inspired me a lot when I was younger and, you know, my pursuing music. It was just a really cool moment to remind myself not to downplay the things I've worked so hard to be that like I've, I've earned my place. And um, anyways, we shouldn't need other people to tell us things that make us realize that about ourselves, but it definitely doesn't hurt, especially when it's coming from artists that you respect a lot or, you know, or anybody, anytime someone stops me, you know, as I'm going out and about and they tell me that my music means something to them and that, you know, something I wrote helped them or helped, you know, change them or whatever. Like my music was there for them when they needed it. That always means so much to me. So yeah, whether it's coming from a, an artist that I respect or just a random person that stops me in the airport. It always means something. And so I, I love getting to meet you guys and, and hear your stories. And, um, and it's just really exciting when you get reminded that like, no, don't count yourself out. We deserve to be big. So um, speaking of love, I want to play uh, all for nothing. This is such a good song. He was one of my first guests and it was, you know, I loved my chat with him. So let's listen to love. All righty. Okay. Another one of my favorite, favorite interviews that I did was um, I was so inspired by not only reading the book. I Before I interviewed Lacey and Lexi, um, oh gosh, what's their last name? It's um, Kite or it's Lindsay and Lexi Kite. So sorry for butchering that. Um, but they're the writers of the book More Than a Body, which, oh my gosh, I think that everybody especially every woman but I feel like everybody like I don't think body image issues and 
you know, the things that we deal with when we look in the mirror and we look at other people and compare ourselves online. I don't think that's just compartmentalized to women. I think that it is a struggle for so many people. Um, male, female, I don't think anyone escapes. So I think the book More Than a Body is something that everyone should read. <laughs> Personally, it was so eye-opening to me. I wish I'd had that book when I was struggling with anorexia because I think it would have really, really helped me. Um, it's unlike any other body positivity book I've read, and believe me, I've read quite a few. Um, but it just was so good at cracking me out of this place where my mind goes of like, this kind of unhealthy spot where we get so sucked into the fact that all the care that we put into our physical appearance, that feels so normal. It feels so like that's just the way it is. And this book helped me realize that's not the way it has to be. It is the way our society has made us, but it's, there are other ways of thinking and we need to view our bodies as instruments, not ornaments. And I think that whenever I challenge my body, for example, when I'm getting ready for a tour and I'm getting back in shape or, or anytime I have a physical goal in general, just when I'm practicing my aerial stuff, like, and realizing how strong my body can be and how amazing it is that it can like, you know, it can do these crazy things. It can like, aside from just walking and just being able to take me from point A to point B and then my eyes can see and I can see the beauty in life. And my ears can hear aside from just all those things that we take so for granted, like we can really challenge our bodies and we can we can do pretty amazing things with them and so you know their book was all about seeing your body as an instrument and appreciating what it can do because what you put energy into whether that's you know getting tons of uh like plastic surgeries on your face or whether it's you know like whatever you put energy into that's what you're going to value in your life and so they just kind of make you aware of like be careful how much value you put into your you know your physical appearance and just that you should instead focus more on goals of what you would like your body to do for you, like how strong you want to be. Anyways, it was such a good, I, I'll stop because I'm probably butchering their message. You should just read the book more than a body. Um, and they don't have any music I can play, but I love that I got to talk to Jax. Um, she has that song Victoria's Secret, which is so good about body image and about just like, hey, we all have thighs of thunder. We all have normal bodies. They're just all our own version of a normal body and there's no right body. Um, so I love this song. I love her. Like we had such a great time chatting. Um, I've gotten to meet her in the real world as well. And she is just lovely. We're kind of cut from the same cloth. Um, and again, like I said, I just loved that every single guest I had on my show, I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I understand you. We, we are very similar. And there was a lot of camaraderie in that, that I, that I really loved and felt really appreciative that I got to um, feel that with so many different guests. Anyway, so here, this is Victoria's Secret from Jax. Amazing. Such a good message. And I'm like, man, I love that songs like this are being written nowadays for me and my age, but also like to grow up with like these positive body image issue, you know, messaging. It's so great. And the world is a lot harder and there's so much more to deal with for the people, the kiddos growing up today and for us in our adulthood even to deal with. So it's like, you got to combat it with something. And I'm so glad that there's people sharing these kind of messages. Um, absolutely love her. Um, another, you know, interview I had where we just got to talk a lot about um, self-love and self-compassion and, you know, kind of being, you know, facing our fears, but at the same time being able to give ourselves a little bit of grace as we face our fears. Um, I loved my conversation just last week with Col Colby Calais and this song try is so good. I think it's, I relate to it a lot because um, I've really been working on just learning to be, I'm not great at it all the time, but I've gotten so much better at just letting myself be and realize it's okay. You don't have to like, you don't have to do so much and try so hard all the time. It's like, sometimes it's okay just to be like, Hey, this is who I am you know, take or leave it. You know, I hope, I hope you like me as I am because this is what you get. Um, so I love this song, Try by Colby Kelly. All righty. So good. Okay. I just want to play one or two more songs. Um, I got to play one from my girl, uh, actually Lindsay, um, Paris. The band Paris is so fun. I've been listening to them for years and it was like so cool to get to interview her and chat with her. And to hear that she actually liked my music as well. Um, it's always so cool when you're mutual fans of each other. But more than that, I love that we actually became friends from 
you know, just meeting each other through the interview. And, you know, we've been hiking twice. Um, we had a pizza night one time. Like, she is just a wonderful, down-to-earth, such a kind, loving human. Um, and this is their new song. It just got recently released. Love is a dot, dot, dot is what the song is called. And I just watched the music video before it. And it's really cool. It's a one-take um very simple but very well filmed and um you know one takes are always a little bit nerve-wracking so i respect her for doing a one take and um it's really well done so i recommend you watch the music video this is from paris love is dot 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 love it love her love their music the song is powerful um all right i've got one last one for you from my buddy jason Mraz. um i love that i got to interview him i loved our conversation i love how he is so intentional with the way he approaches his life. You know, he, he moved on to an avocado farm because he wanted to be more connected with the earth. And he was like, I love that he said, you know, you got to evaluate your life, basically. And he realized that he was spending so much time touring and in big cities and, you know, with technology and on stages and, you know, just in this very heightened version of reality and so he wanted to be more connected with just the basics and earth. And so he moved on to a farm so that he could try to balance his life a little bit more. And he's like, I need, realized I needed that. Um, so I thought that was super insightful and really cool. Just we're always trying to like find balance. I think that's one of the, the hardest challenges of life. And the fact that he's found it through that is really cool. Kind of makes me think like, okay, where's my life at? Where do I need to balance a little bit better? And secondly, um, I, I just love this song. It's so good. I went to his, um, he had an album release show down here in LA, like on Sunset. And it was so cool to get to see him play live and hear this song live with his huge band that is like amazing. Like he has live horn players on stage. He's got a cellist. He's got, he's just got a, a stage full of musicians. And it's really cool because that's not as common nowadays. You know, you got a lot of artists a little bit more like me who, um, use a lot of, I have live instrumentation for sure on stage, but also it's supplemented with quite a bit of tracks, um, so that I can have my dancers, you know, you got to choose where you're going to invest. And so I choose to have more dancers, less band, but it always is really cool. when I do get to see an artist who has a big full band. Um, it just creates a really cool energy. I loved it. Um, so here is, I feel like dancing the new single from Jason Mraz. All right. I feel like that's a perfect way to wrap up this afternoon. Thank you guys for listening. And thanks for all of you who came to just any of the, any of our streams. Um, I've really enjoyed, like I said, this community. I've enjoyed having this in most of my weeks as kind of like a staple where I knew I was going to get to have this chance to connect with my fans and play music and talk to cool people. And you know, the fact that you guys showed up week after week to listen means the world to me. Um, I love you guys so much. And, um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this this radio show. And, again, I'm, I'm super excited to be getting to connect with you guys in a new way very soon. I'll be on the road. We're hitting Europe soon. We'll be hitting the States soon. Um, so, yeah, hope to see you on the road. If not, hope to catch you in a later event of some some kind so we can keep connecting and sharing good vibes. All right. Thank you guys for all your kind messages. I see, um, I see people saying, see you on discord. Yes. If you want more, um, of this community, we have a wonderful discord community that you can go to and join us there. Um, and if not, like I said, I'll see you somewhere. See you online. See you on YouTube, TikTok, or on tour. Okay. Take care everybody. Bye.